I would probably just say, yeah, it's pretty likely that we are. Uh, 741, uh, Tuesday, May 3rd. Taste with Toss. As Toss Yada joins us in the KUM News Link uh, Zoom room. Good morning, Toss. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, everybody. Happy Tuesday. Right on. Uh, so there's a new episode out. Uh, I got the clip here. I'm going to go ahead and play it, uh, Toss, and then we can uh, kind of chit-chat about it. I know you got a couple other things that you wanted to share with uh, the audience, but uh, if you don't mind, yeah. could you give us a little bit about what this latest episode is about? So this latest episode is featuring multi-sport athlete Michaela Atoyvi. So she's actually wrapping up her high school career right now, but within the short period of time from her being 13 to 17 years old, she's managed to excel in not only the sport of rugby, but in wrestling and Olympic weightlifting as well. Um, and so similar to my previous interviewee that I've had on the last time, just a young athlete doing many, many things, many, many sports and ultimately leading to a scholarship with Brown University. So I thought she was a perfect athlete to highlight here on Guam and for the Marianas as well to see what it actually means to, to be a candidate for a scholarship and at a, at a university quite like, like Brown University. So I think it was a great, great, great talk for this one, this episode. All right, well, let's give them a little sniblet of the latest episode of Taste with Toss on the KUAM Podcast huh. Network. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, on Guam, playing rugby and also wrestling, you're exposed to certain communities, and there's a lot of adults, mm-hmm. like um, everyone at Custom Fitness, and then there's a lot of people in the wrestling community that really look out for us kids and us growing athletes, and they yeah. do want us to play in college, and they want us to continually get better. And I would definitely say that that's that's an opportunity that sports have given me Mm -hmm. just exposing me to people who care about me about other athletes and wanting us to excel yeah like uh especially the gym i would really say the gym they Mm -hmm. open their doors to a lot of young athletes without really a goal in mind yet but there is a goal in the end it's just really to try and meet your potential i guess yeah yeah Yeah. and And i think for a lot of people if you've never seen custom fitness it's it's an experience walking in there for the first time, just seeing the caliber of athletes, to seeing all the equipment, the space, the music that's blasting. Yeah. You see all the coaches and they're giving you a hard time and hee hee ha ha. I'm one of them too. But um, yeah, but then realizing, man, this is this is an amazing place to train. Yeah. Um, and then being able to meet people who are training, maybe for training sake or training for specific sports and and that's usually how it kind of works. That's how it trickles trickles down yeah. into making making decisions to try new decisions to try new sports. Uh, Toss, I want I want to say that we've had a lot of success, uh, you know, nationally and internationally uh, with rugby. And I remember uh, just being younger, uh, there was always that conversation about like what sport could people from Guam really excel in, and they would say like, oh, it's not going to be basketball because you know we're not <laughs> tall, or or oh, it's not this. And and I never heard. Um, people talk about rugby because, you know, it's a f- the physicality of it, right? But we have really uh, put Guam on the rugby uh, map over the last few years. I mean, from Michaela and just a, a bunch of other uh, great examples. So what is it, I wanted to ask, what is it about Guam players and rugby that, you know, makes us uh, excel, um, not just, uh, you know, internationally, mm-hmm. but uh, especially that transition from, like, high school to college? Well, you know, I think what what advantage we have here on Guam is the fact that it's being introduced at a middle middle school level now. So when I was playing rugby, I think I was the second year for them to allow even flag rugby at the high school level. So within that short period of time, they've opened it up to middle school and then they've allowed full contact rugby for the women's side. And I think that has just allowed for a lot more skills development over time. Um, I also like to think that the Guam Rugby Football Union, now Guam Rugby Union, has definitely made it a point to, to put more resources into the youth development, into that grassroots development. And we've just had a core of dedicated athletes and officials who have continued to push that forward and find opportunities for them to compete, not just even at the women's national level, but even before that. So U16, U19 
competitions here in Asia. So I think that's definitely contributed to opening up a lot more opportunities for these athletes to excel at in an international level and even compete in the States and have scholarships like Michaela has now. Right. Do you think that part of it too is that we've uh, really uh, cut through the mystique of what it takes to apply to schools for athletic scholarships? Uh, because it kind of seems like after the first couple, the floodgates really open because you had, you know, people who understood the process or, or whatever and able to assist like all of these uh, great athletes who are making that transition. Oh, definitely. And so in, in the podcast episode, Michaela also had mentioned that now that she's gone through that whole process, she's able to help some of her peers start that process as well, which I think is so amazing because it's one thing for a high school athlete to be interested but it's a whole nother thing to ask for help, ask for support. And to have that from someone who is amongst their peers is so powerful versus asking an adult or asking somebody older than them that they may not be able to relate to or speak their language, if you will. But I think <laughs> speak the young and language. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but really just somebody that they could approach yeah, yeah. in that way. Yeah. So that is covered in the episode. Uh, it's going live. I know that you've got it up on your YouTube. We're going to put it everywhere where uh, fine podcasts are found with the rest of the KUAM podcast uh, network. Toss, thanks for this episode. I know there's a couple things that you wanted to, uh, you're doing a new glute camp round. Oh, yeah. Cohort three. It's starting actually next week, May, May 9th. May 9th. Yes. And it'll be four sessions across the week, Monday through Thursday. Monday and Wednesday, it's at 5.30 p.m. And then Tuesday and Thursday, it's at 6 p.m. So really excited to get more of the community involved with that. Uh, although it's catered to, yes, glute development, it's really something that's scalable for everybody, regardless of their level of training and what, as regardless of other things that they're currently dealing with. Right. I know. And I know it's glute focused, but you're going to see changes all around uh, your body, right? When, when you. Oh, uh, most definitely. Most definitely. I've had a lot of members, uh, dog and duty members that, <laughs> that have, you know, you know, approached me and said, man, you know, you showed me what I can do with my body, what my body is capable of, as well as things like, you know, I've dropped uh, X amount of pounds and I'm feeling so much better, so much more energetic. And those are things that are, I find more meaningful I, personally, but right. yes. yeah. And I mean, I know we had you on when uh, you were talking about doing the first uh, cohort, if you will, of the, of the glute camp. Now we're heading in round three. How's that make you feel? I mean, you, you didn't know if this was going to work. You put it out there and it's working. It's, it's still, it's still a, something that I can't really describe just yet because uh, I, I truly do appreciate the belief and support that my clients and, and the members here at Custom Fitness have in me. Um, and I don't take that lightly. So I, I don't, um, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know how I should feel, but I'm, I'm very grateful, very, feeling very for, fortunate. I, I just don't think those are the right words. I think there's, there's a word better that I can't think of. And I can't describe well, it. I'm pretty sure when you get into glue cam round four, maybe it'll come to you. Maybe. Yes. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll circle back. <laughs> um, Toss, you've been posting a little bit and I've seen it up on uh, some of the physical therapy on the Instagram, uh, the pelvic floor uh, thing. It's a little out of my league. Can you just tell us about pelvic floor health and this? Uh, it's a, like a class you're teaching, right? Yeah. So we've partnered up with Sagwa Manyagu, the birthing center. Um, and really what we wanted to offer was some sort of course catered, yes, to pregnant women or recently pregnant women, but definitely open to women and anyone who would be interested in learning more about the pelvic floor. But really the pelvic floor is such an important, important group of muscles that have multiple functions and can often lead to multiple dysfunctions if they do have some sort of what dysfunction when it comes to anything, weakness, tightness, overuse, underuse, whatever the case may be. Um, but really those muscles are work, work together to be supportive for the torso and the organs. They work to stabilize the hips. They work to aid in sexual function. It's really quite an important set of muscles that often goes unaddressed. And so yeah. I think the more we educate our community on, on these set of muscles and what you can actually do, 
uh, the more of an impact we can have on women's current pregnancies or recent pregnancies, anybody who has any type of pelvic floor dysfunction so they could have at least lead a, a, a more quality type of life or lifestyle. So when you talk about raising awareness, I mean, it, it's kind of crazy. I've gone my whole life and I've been totally unaware of pelvic floor muscles, what they do. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know, why now? Why is this kind of getting out uh, now? Is it just um, something that you really want to share with uh, people or is there just more awareness of it, you know, internationally? Yeah, so I, I'd say both. I'd say both because it's still very new, fairly new to the vast majority of, of our community and even I would even argue in the states and internationally like you had mentioned. And so the more we know, the more we can be prepared to to do what's next when it comes to addressing somebody's health um, and also to realize certain things are not normal, maybe common, but not normal. So things like frequent urination or urinary incontinence, meaning uh, any type of urinary leakage or voiding on yourself without without voluntarily meaning to void or urinate. So things things of that nature, re recognizing, you know, it's not normal to get up four or five times at night. It's not normal to get in the car and at, you peed 20, 20 minutes ago and you need to go pee again. That's not normal. Um, other things like being constipated and, and not having daily bowel movements, that's not normal, but it can be addressed. I say not normal, but definitely common. And a lot of in a lot of our community members aren't aware that these things are not normal, and they can be fixed and they can be prevented. Right. Yeah. Wow. That's uh. You remind me of of uh. You know, I used to do laundry from uh. Wash my grandpa's clothes, and I think he had some of those issues. But you know, like you said, people just didn't know. No. Uh, so that's that's great. Uh, how do people find out about this uh, set of classes for pelvic uh, floor health tests? Oh, so they could they could either visit C, uh, at CFG Physical Therapy the Instagram profile account. They could also visit uh, Sawwoman Yagu's IG account, or they can contact our offices as well. And so, if you if you access the Instagram accounts and the profiles in those posts, you can see the contact information there as well. All right, and I'm pretty sure when they attend this class, you give them some exercises they can do to strengthen the the pelvic. Oh yes. Part. Uh, definitely. There's all, there always has to be some sort of exercise. Right. Involved. I figured. Toss, thank you. So the new episode, it's uh, everywhere. It's a great one. It's uh, Taste with Toss, a Jamaican girl, and she's uh, interviewing Michaela Toigui, uh, rugby standout and star. Tossy, thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me, Chris. Everyone have a good day. That's that, Joss. That's uh, Tossy Atta there. You can uh, follow her on uh, Instagram, also uh, Custom Fitness. They've always got a lot of information about uh, what they got going on.